Where to next? Ocean hazards. Everyone loves to talk about big, scary ocean hazards and death. <laughs> this is an artistic representation of a tsunami, the great wave of Kanagawa. This is a not-so-artistic representation of another tsunami that hit Japan in 2011 after the magnitude 9 earthquake off the coast. We're talking about huge forces, uh, and yet tsunamis are not the only ones, uh, the only features, the only hazards that the ocean can produce. Because of heat release uh, and precipitation, the ocean generates, again, some of the largest forces on this planet. This is a typhoon. Again, measuring in terms of nuclear bombs, a typhoon, while it's raining, can release the equivalent of amount of energy as 10 nuclear bombs in one second. Imagine one of those hitting, in, hitting into your coast. We've already talked a little bit about the ways that ocean plates uh, are related to uh, hazards that we experience and have throughout history and will continue. Right off our coast, uh, we've experienced an earthquake back in the 1700s, five or 600 years before that, another one. Five or 600 years before that, another one. If the 1700s earthquake was 300 years ago, we might expect another earthquake in approximately 200 years, or before that. I don't say this as a way to scare you away from Washington, because it is beautiful, but you might as well get your earthquake preparedness kit ready. Uh, the, <laughs> the earthquake that uh, hits the coast of this uh, full margin rip will extend all the way from Vancouver Island to Northern California, and when it goes, it'll only shake for a few minutes, uh, but it'll be, again, an enormous release of energy. Um, and there are ways to be prepared, so it's not all doomsday, end of the world stuff. That's what I was talking about. Uh, but of course, there are other hazards in the ocean, or triggered by the ocean, um, that aren't huge, catastrophic, unmovable forces. You might think if I talk about swimming in the ocean, uh, oh no, sharks, jellyfish, stingrays. Who has the stingray? There we go. And yet, I want to point out that about five people a year die from sharks. More people die from toilets, and coconuts, or pigs, or driving in a car, which is something that we all take up easily every single day. Uh, so, not all of the hazards in the ocean are so uh, big and threatening. There are some scary things in the ocean, uh, but there are plenty of other things in the ocean that are hazardous, that are not the ocean's fault, other than moving them around. This is another artistic representation of the Great Wave of Kanagawa, this one made out of ocean plastics. This is an ocean hazard that is anthropogenic in cause. Humans have dumped all this plastic into the ocean, and the only responsibility that the ocean has is having moved it all around. And of course, this uh, breaks apart and gets into the food chain and uh, affects things like resources. Uh, it affects even uh, ocean chemistry. So, there are numerous ways that uh, the ocean can uh, either throw a lot of energy at us or move things around in ways that are uh, kind of hazardous to us or the other life that lives in the ocean. And being aware of them is the way that we can mitigate and move on and get over some of, uh, A, the fears, but also the actual real dangers. So, to uh, recap a little bit of what we've done, we've talked about hazards, plate tectonics, indigenous people, and currents. We've got three topics left.